Welcome back, everybody. It's nice to see you guys again. Thank you for joining me for this second episode of the 1909 Lincoln Cent. I do very much appreciate you guys watching. And with that being said, we're going to kind of jump right into it. Today's episode is about the Type 2 reverse on a 1909 Lincoln Cent. And there are a lot of people that don't know that there were actually two different reverses made. And the big question is, okay, great. What does it look like? So we're going to answer that question in today's episode. And the second part of that, though, is a lot of people scratch their heads and go, okay, well, why did they make a second reverse for the 1909 Lincoln Cent? And I'll explain the reasoning behind why they did. We are going to, going forward here, refer to the gentleman who designed the 1909 Lincoln Cent, Victor David Brenner, as just Brenner, because it will be much easier. Uh, there is another player that is going to become important in this particular uh, video, and that is Charles Barber. So if you guys collect other uh, denominations of coins, you'll recognize that name. He was the chief engraver in 1909. And uh, there is some really cool history behind uh, Charles Barber and the 1909 Lincoln Cent that a lot of people aren't aware of. They think that Brenner had everything to do with it, and that is not the case. So with all of that said, if you have not had the opportunity to watch the first episode and learn about the Type 1 reverse, please go ahead and do so. It will probably help you before watching this particular episode. So with nothing else to add to that intro, let's get ourselves on the road here. Uh, cruise on down and we're going to go back in history to the year 1909 and at this particular point in time it's going to be roughly about late June and early July of 1909. So here we go everybody. Let's start this road trip, shall we? Here we are in late June 1909 and the Philadelphia Mint has discovered we've got a problem with these new Lincoln cents. And the Lincoln cent itself hadn't actually been fully approved by President Taft, who took office earlier that year. Uh, and the interesting part about it was they were producing coins that technically had not been approved to be minted yet. They gave the go ahead to start printing them or minting them. And uh, it was quickly discovered by Charles Barber, who was the chief engraver at the time, that the design of Brenner's was causing problems. It, it related to how the coin was dished or cupped, if you want to call it such, how deep the design was, and also to some of the lettering that was on the design itself. Now, the obverse was having problems as well um, and that needed to be changed but there weren't as many letters and numbers on the obverse as there were on the reverse so the reverse was obviously a, a major problem for them uh, because of all of that and it was causing dyes to crack and break prematurely and we have records that basically show that in 1909 the number of dyes that were created uh, was significantly larger than in following years of the 1909 cent. So what they changed in late June uh, going forward, making dyes obviously had the right impact that it needed to create the coin dyes uh, that would last and produce a lot of coins. What was that change? What did they do? Why did they do it? Well, like I mentioned, the, the coin wasn't dished correctly. It, it had some metal flow issues on it, but they didn't want to change the actual design itself. They just wanted to make it better so that it would work in the coin presses. I'm going to leave the image that you see up on your screen for quite a while here because this is an important image and this is the type one reverse that you're seeing on your screen right here. And the interesting part about this, as you can tell, I have a few red circled areas on it and these are extremely important areas. These are areas that they, they had the idea that, Hey, things weren't what they needed to be on this reverse. This is Brenner's design. It was his reverse. And if you look really closely at this, you'll see that a lot of Brenner's uh, 
way that he did things had circled edges to it. It had rounded inside cuts to it. And that goes back to the picture that you will see here in a second of his original design and his original drawings, you can actually see how they transferred from how he designed his things to the actual working product. And those were thought to be some of the problems associated with uh, the metal flow uh, of the particular coin. So these were the things that had to be changed. But What's interesting to note here is the person that changed them was not Brenner. It was Charles Barber. There needs to be a little history here because now that you've seen the fact that the design Brenner created wasn't working in the presses the, the way that we or they were hoping that it was going to because of some of these uh, issues with uh, the design itself, Barber, going back in history a little bit, a few months here, had expressed concern that Brenner was not the right person to create these particular designs because he didn't really have any experience creating designs for coinage. He had uh, experience when creating designs for a metal, which as we've pointed out in the first particular video, that was perfectly fine, but they weren't used for everyday commerce and didn't need to meet exact specific uh, specifications. So with that being said, Barber recognized the problem that was uh, being caused by the design on the reverse of the Lincoln scent as they started production on them. And he took it upon himself to actually come up with a rework of that design. And that is what led to the type to reverse. We're going to cover that on the second part of this video. As you can see by the two pictures on your screen right now, the type one and the type two, there is a distinct difference now that I've pointed out all of these things. You can definitely see how the inside of the letter N in United has changed dramatically. The inside cuts are clean and deep compared to the filled in cor corners of the N on the type one reverse. You can see how the T, the top bar of the T has been squared up and shortened. And you can also see how the bottom portion of the letter T has been squared up uh, as well and actually shortened too. It is no longer uh, completely level with the uh, I and the E next to it in that word. Even the E is dramatically different in United. Everything is nice square block letters. And this is one thing that is very, very prominent with Charles Barber's design. Some of his coins throughout history that he designed are well known for holding up in commerce uh, over many, many decades. And that's why you can find a lot of his coinage actually in very low grades because of the fact that it was so well designed and, and so cleanly designed. He was definitely a perfectionist when it came to getting the design correct. So even though this was Brenner's design, it was Barber that actually should be credited with cleaning it all up to get it to work in the coin presses the right way. And you can obviously see the difference. Now, what I've just pointed out is going to become incredibly important in the next video. And that's because there was something special that happened in late June and early July with both the type one and the type two design. If you looked at those pictures correctly, you are seeing what you think you are seeing. Yes, I am not kidding. That is what is known as a class three doubled die. It is a very rare double die. You do not see it much because it involves one design being placed over top of another design. Now you've learned about type one reverses on the Lincoln Cent and type two reverses on the Lincoln Cent. 
In the next video, you're going to learn all about the class three hub doubled double die one design over top of the other. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you will enjoy not only just this video, the previous video, the next video, but after the next video, I've got a little bit of a surprise for you when it comes to the 1910 Lincoln scent and this particular design. Stay tuned, folks. It's going to get fun. See you next time.